I mean, normally, you know, people didn't, as it were, uh, as people just standing around, get a chance to uh, talk to the Queen. Uh, and so that was a, a, a very big step. Uh, 1970 is a long time ago now, but the, uh, the walkabout is well, well established as, as an important element of every um, trip that the Queen takes. And uh, it looks to me as if she's being very generous with her time here. And you can see the security is very visible. Um, Virginia State Police, Richmond Police there, VCU Police, Secret Service, FBI, all there to keep uh, the Queen safe as well as the Governor and First Lady and the Prince, keep all of them safe during this this magic moment. Hey Tony, I've got to ask you something. Uh, this is kind of a, a delight for me because most of the time when you see the Queen, she's always, you know, she has the same demeanor. She's very prim, very proper. I guess that's, you know, part of what is expected of her. But here she's all smiles and uh, she seems genuinely very happy. And you were talking that she really does have a very good sense of humor. Well, you saw the, the thing about the hat. Um, I was at one function when she got up to speak and she began by saying, yeah, I'd like you to know that we in the palace uh, um, are firm believers in recycling everything. And I'd uh, just like you to know that this speech was given by Prince Charles three weeks ago. And, uh, and I'm just repeating it. Well, her flower handlers uh, are, are getting their hands full. I don't know where all of those are going back to at this point. But uh, as Rob pointed out, the Queen does seem to be truly enjoying herself there on the walkabout. And so does the crowd. I, I'm a little envious of them because they're actually a lot closer than we are. We're in our studio, you know, some four or five miles from the Capitol, and, and seeing this, this is the best vantage point to watch it on television, oh, but, yeah. but, you know, this is probably going to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for most of these people to see the Queen up close. One of the features here is that the, both the Queen and Prince Philip are being guided by the Governor and, uh, and, and the First Lady. Um, normally, I think the Queen would expect to uh, decide for herself uh, where she was going to go, but it's, it's interesting that she's accepting the uh, um, uh, prompting of, of the Governor and, and Anne Holton. Again, being very generous with everyone today mm -hmm. in protocol and, and everything. I'm sure people uh, in the capital itself are, are thinking, how much longer is it going to take to, uh, for her to, to get through this uh, long, long line? She's <laughs> devoting a lot of attention. And it looks as if she's trying to pick out uh, younger people, but that, that's probably just my impression. And this is just the beginning of, of her afternoon activities because she still has a speech to give um, to the General Assembly. Is the, would that be something that she would write herself? I imagine that this speech was first drafted in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office uh, and then the, the private secretaries in the palace would have a go at it and it'd be passed back uh, and the, uh, the embassy in, in Washington which for some reason is called the British Embassy and not the UK Embassy, uh, would probably have a final say uh, to make sure that uh, the terminology um, didn't offend American ears. It looks Tell as if her hat has got slightly skew whiff. Is that my impression? Um, I, think it, I think that she's wearing it that way on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Tony it's, uh, it's, Tony, it's well known that the monarchy went, after, went through a difficult period after Diana's death. How? How did she help it recover in those years following and, and help it regain its popularity? Well, I think um, she took on more um, events and, and, and you know, put herself about rather more uh, um, keenly than... Uh, because I think at that stage she was thinking it was time that she stood back and let Prince Charles um, take over the world public attention. Um, but I think she and Prince Philip have realized that they personify the monarchy more than uh, um, Prince Charles. And, and, and so you know, this is, a, a, is an example of the kind of dedication that uh, she's showing. And do you think that, that, that making this trip might be, and this might be the wrong terminology, kind of an ego boost to her to see how much Americans still love the British monarch? Well, uh, I'm sure it's very pleasing to, to see a good crowd. Uh, it, it, it would be very shaking uh, um, if the Queen turned up anywhere and, and uh, there weren't too many people around. Tony, <laughs> speaking of the crowd, uh, we can see all the action here live on CBS 6, but uh, we want to get a feel of what it's like by talking to someone who's actually there. Our Greg McQuaid is there amongst the crowd. And Greg, can you see anything? 
Well, Rob, what I can say, a lot of back of heads from people that are standing on the south portico lawn here in front of the Capitol, just waiting to catch a glimpse of the Queen as she makes her way around on her walkabout. They're watching the Jumbotron. Their eyes are peeled on the two Jumbotrons. And there was an audible gasp when the door to the executive mansion opened up and Governor Tim Kaine and the Queen started descending the stairs and making her way over. You can start to hear some of the crowd uh, actually start to applaud because they are getting to see her firsthand right now. I'll tell you, the Capitol is looking marvelous. It's looking spectacular. And now you can see some Union Jacks flying. The crowd is actually getting to see her personally. And uh, I'll tell you, it's quite exciting because um, right now for this reporter, this is, uh, we're actually witnessing history here. And uh, she's actually right now greeting some Native Americans, some uh, Virginia's um, Indian tribes. And um, she has had some pleasant things to say to some folks. You can see the, a wide grin on the Queen's face uh, along with Governor Tim Kaine. You can tell he's enjoying himself. We spoke with him earlier today. He said he was really looking forward to walking up the staircase with the Queen, looking out and seeing all of the smiling faces of Virginians to give this Queen Elizabeth II a very warm Virginia welcome. Folks, back in the studio. Thank you, Greg. And as we mentioned, um, this visit is very different from her first visit for uh, the 50th, the I should say the 350th anniversary of Jamestown, uh, when the state was still largely segregated back then. Um, Greg mentioning, uh, and as you saw there, that she's having a chance to. Uh, visit with some of our Native Americans here in Virginia. She will salute Native Americans while she's here. She will have a chance, uh, I believe she did when she was inside the governor's mansion to meet with Oliver Hill, our venerated civil rights lawyer. And she will also have a moment, uh, we understand, to meet with the Virginia, some of the Virginia Tech victims. Look like uh, Ann Holton is uh, filling the queen in on some of the uh, goings on right there. Of course, she's uh, uh, Harvard graduate, very smart lady, and uh, has a very good relationship with a lot of the uh, community organizations, including the American mm -hmm. Indians here in Virginia. Mm -hmm. A ceremony by the Native Americans. Tony, you were mentioning that there is, uh, uh, there are actually are a couple of Native American powwows this weekend that some of the British uh, uh, contingency are going to be attending. Yes, the, um, apart from the two co-chairmen of the um, 2007 UK committee, there are also people over here from Kent County Council uh, who are twinned with uh, New Kent County here. And um, they're all, uh, and also Lord Delisle uh, and his wife are here, Lady Delisle. And so all, there was a tremendous uh, degree of attention given to the Virginia Indians uh, when they visited uh, Kent um, around about December. And so the Indians are very keen to give uh, hospitality to, to the, the British uh, official contingent who are here in support of the Queen. And are, are helping in the Jamestown commemoration as well because obviously the Native Americans' perspective of the story is, is a lot different. Well, yes. Um, I mean, what I found very interesting um, is that, that uh, the Jamestown celebration has been nuanced uh, with, uh, away from the emphasis on the English uh, um, original character of it uh, into its impact on the native population and, of course, uh, the unfortunate uh, incidents of, of slavery that thereafter. So um, the, the Jamestown celebration uh, uh, you know, has taken on a much wider historical perspective. And it'd be interesting to see whether the Queen can reflect that uh, with the help of her spe speech writers uh, when she comes to speak to the General Assembly. And we also learned that uh, First Lady Ann Holton had a portrait of Pocahontas brought over from the Capitol to 
be uh, prominently featured in the governor's mansion during the Queen's visit. That was a beautiful portrait. And, and there's another interesting story about another portrait that's in the executive mansion that is purported to be that of Elizabeth I, Tony. Well, um, the Virginia um, um, State Library has gone to great lengths to try and get the provenance of this particular portrait which hangs above the, the fireplace uh, in the executive mansion. Uh, Lady Astor, uh, who was a Virginian and, and a member of British Parliament, gave this uh, to uh, Virginia, this portrait, and said that it was a portrait of, of Queen Elizabeth I. Um, it's been quite a struggle to prove that to be so, and it remains a matter of controversy. And uh, I wouldn't at this stage like to uh, throw cold water on it, but let's assume it is a portrait of a young Elizabeth I. And it, it appears that there is going to be a gift presented to Queen Elizabeth. Well, this looks like an, uh, a, a, an Indian... Uh, now, what is that? Anybody guess? Uh, she's a, going to receive, I'm sure, quite a few a bag uh, of some gifts sort with while feathers. she's here. Yeah. Um, she's, a, she's asking the governor if he could say what it is. And he's shaking his head. <laughs> I'm sure they're finding out. And as we uh, had heard earlier, a number of uh, Virginia's former governors were invited to attend today's event. We just did see uh, Richmond Mayor and former Governor Doug Wilder there, I believe, accompanied by one of his daughters. While in the governor's mansion, uh, we understand that the uh, first family presented the queen with the gift. Um, the uh, governor's chief of staff found uh, a book by Thomas Jefferson called Notes on Virginia. First edition. Yes, first edition that was presented to Queen Elizabeth. He learned that she had a vast library there uh, in Buckingham Palace. Tony, um, she's a voracious reader? I don't know how she can uh, find the time to be a voracious reader. <laughs> I'm sure she likes light reading, um, but uh, her successive ten prime ministers have always been struck by a tremendous command of what's happening in the world uh, so I imagine she's a voracious newspaper reader as a, a, and of course she has a, a, a wonderful service in terms of, of, of cuttings that are, are put in front of her every day so she can see what's being said about the monarchy and about the main political issues of the day. You know, let's remember she is here to help us commemorate the Jamestown 400th anniversary and what a unique perspective she just received there uh, sharing gifts with the uh, Native American tribes that uh, were here in Virginia back then when the settlers arrived. So that's got to be a neat experience for both of them, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Well, now I think the main hope is that she's going to turn around and wave uh, when she gets to the top of these stairs. Yes, right on schedule. This is the arrival and greeting ceremony on the Capitol steps. This is the uh, south portico of the newly renovated Capitol, uh, designed by Thomas Jefferson, of course, back in 1785 and modeled after a Roman temple in France and today being visited yeah, by the Queen of England. Let's listen. I think the governor is explaining the changes that have probably been made fairly recently in the layout of the, of the gardens. And the timing couldn't have been more perfect for them to finish the renovations at the Capitol. Well, there must have been lots of size of relief. Just this week. Speaking of which, that's where they're going now. They are going inside for that Capitol tour. A $104 million recent renovation of the uh, Virginia Capitol. Uh, not the first, of course, it was expanded back in 1904 when they added on the House and Senate chambers and the uh, corridors linking the rotunda to the chambers enlarged in 1962. This renovation, $104 million, took over two years and uh, not just a new look. I mean, it's beautiful inside, as you can see. This is the entrance in the South Portico. Uh, not just uh, the facade, but, uh, you know, everything on the walls, including the new ventilation system and duct work and... Uh, overhaul of the electrical and plumbing uh, doesn't sound uh, all that exciting but still uh, badly needed there for the capital uh, workers were still laying the sod yesterday for this 219 year old capital that the uh, the queen is visiting general assembly had to use the patrick henry building of course for the last two years uh, used to be the old state library but uh, they are glad to be back in session and they're meeting for this uh, commemorative session to hear 
uh, from the Queen in just a little bit. They have all gathered. She will be the first member of the British Royal Crown to address the Virginia Assembly. Of course, this is that hidden wing. It's about uh, 27,000 square foot addition. Uh, columned entrance, as you saw there. This is near the, uh, I think it's 9th and Bank Streets. And uh, what you saw there on the floor, it is lined with 1,600 slabs of Jerusalem gold limestone that was imported in from Israel. And uh, inside there, where all these people are crowded around, you're probably not going to be able to get a very good look. Uh, but inside here is a, a visitor center, a restaurant, gift shop, uh, workspace for uh, some of our reporters that are down there right now. I'm, I'm sure they're probably crammed in there like sardines. Meeting rooms for the members of the House and Senate. As uh, one person said, a lobbyist said, it gives them a, a lot more places to hide. <laughs> And another presentation of a gift to the queen, which she immediately hands off to her <laughs> lady-in-waiting. Now I would imagine these are some of the uh, special guests uh, as there were inside the governor's mansion. Just uh, a few select guests. Uh, the crowd outside was uh, open to the public, but this is going to be uh, probably some of uh, your legislators and uh, some dignitaries from around Virginia. <laughs> Uh, that are actually inside the Capitol. Tony, you were mentioning some of your friends are among the invited guests inside. Do, can you give us a better perspective on who would have been given access inside the Capitol? Well, a, a, quite a number of the people here are, are people who work for the General Assembly. And what they've been uh, asked to do is to come in very early today to make sure everything was spick and spanned. And, and as a uh, reward for that, they are, um, are allowed, as you can see them, standing around as the Queen goes past. Mm -hmm. So these are, are people who work for the General Assembly, many of them. And they're uh, in the area now with a rotunda with the statue of, of yes. Thomas Jefferson. Well, or, or is it George Washington, I guess? Or, I, I, that's right, I can't see which statue. <laughs> that might be the George Washington rotunda. Mm -hmm. Tony, what are the, some of the things that you think she would be interested in learning as the governor shows her around the uh, Capitol there, the Capitol building? I think she'd be interested in the um, the presentations that have been made previously. It's, it's interesting that, for example, the mace uh, came from the British House of Commons, uh, the mace that is on show here in the Capitol. Um, it must be bewildering to be in, uh, introduced to so many people in such a short time, but. She will take away a general impression of a generous welcome and, and an enthusiastic set of people. Um, and the, the, I mean, the helpfulness, I think, of, of the governor and, and, uh, and Anne Holton will be the impression she'll go away with. And I'm sure at this point, Queen Elizabeth is probably happy to see a chair. That's been quite a, a bit of time standing and walking and walking upstairs and, and, and greeting the crowd. At, at 81 years old, it's probably nice to, to take a seat for a change at this point. Yeah, I believe what you're looking at here is the, uh, the common area. It's, uh, you know, you can see behind her, it's, it's lined, many statues and paintings, uh, portraits of former governors, lieutenant governors, important legislators. And uh, yeah, got a photograph opportunity and, and probably a, a well-deserved seat after that walk about through the Capitol Square. We do want to let you know that we're about 20 minutes away from the Queen's speech to the General Assembly. We will carry that live here on CBS 6. There are uh, some famous occasions when the Queen has been required to watch uh, presentations, dances, displays um, for hour after hour after hour. One of the secrets of uh, being the host to the royals is to uh, make sure they don't have to sit um, uh, for too long and that they, they have a break. It sounds now as if somebody is making a presentation. Well, maybe we should just Let's try and listen. listen. Mm -hmm. The second offer, later in 1861, was to be a general in command of the armies of the United States. <laughs> and likewise, General Lee, very politely and with sadness, declined to become the general commanding the armies of the United States because he had just learned that after some delay and indecision, Virginia had decided to secede from the Union. And knowing that if he had accepted promotion within the United States Army, which he had richly deserved after a long career, knowing that if he did accept, he would have to raise his sword against Virginia, he declined that offer and all of the honors and prestige that might have come with it. 
because he chose the third offer. And the third offer to Robert E. Lee came from the governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Would uh, Lee accept command of the armed forces of our Virginia Commonwealth? Again, that an opportunity for Queen Virginia. Elizabeth and Prince Philip and to learn a little bit about uh, Virginia history spot. and uh, Richmond's history. And this is going to be a quick trip for them. They're only going to be in the United States for about six days, and they will be heading off later today to uh, the Norfolk area. Uh, we were watching as they were coming through a lot of the flowers and, and gifts that were given. We talked about what would happen to the flowers. They usually are given to a children's hospital. Uh, we know in this country, the presidential gifts usually go on display somewhere. What happens to all the gifts that are given to the Queen? Well, there, there are uh, all sorts of rules. Uh, what they try and do is to find uh, what you might call a good home for, for gifts. For, uh, I mean, uh, they sometimes, when they were in Africa, were, were given animals. Well, those animals are now in the London Zoo. Um, but uh, the smaller gifts will, will go into the royal collection. And from time to time, they're, um, like you and I going into the attic, uh, um, some will be cleared out and, and, and passed on to museums or other places. Um, the choice of, uh, of gifts is, is a very uh, a nice kind of issue. Um, and I think the, uh, the idea of the book, which is both history uh, and something that's decidedly portable, um, was a very smart choice. And what about the gifts that are given uh, in the crowd, uh, along with flowers? What would happen with those? Uh, well, um, I imagine that, uh, um, that um, somebody here within the Commonwealth will probably find a home for most of those. Um, it's only the, what you might call, ceremonial gifts that will go back to the UK, I'm, I'm sure. Now, you mentioned they used to give gifts of animals, and we know Queen Elizabeth is, a, is an animal lover. And you were telling me that she even, there's an, even a special breed of dog that was created for the Queen. She has two special breeds of dogs. That, um, there's a special breed of dogs in, based in Sandringham, but I think the more interesting one is a, a set of dogs called doggies, which are cross between a Dachshund and a Corgi. And the Queen has four Dorgies, uh, as well as having five Corgis. She has five Corgis, their names are Emma, Linnet, Monty, Holly, and Willow. Mm. And uh, she's always specialized in Corgis, and she, in her time she's had 30 Corgis in all. So um, the, the, the Queen Mother also uh, had Corgis, and the Queen was forced to take over, when her mother died, those Corgis. Unfortunately, the story is that the Queen Mother's corgis didn't get on with the Queen's corgis uh, and uh, they would fight, which was uh, quite an embarrassment. <laughs> Tony, she also uh, loves horses and we understand that while she's in the U.S., she'll have a chance to uh, watch the Kentucky Derby, which has been a dream of hers. Well, she uh, has, uh, in the Royal Stud, she's still training uh, race horses and um, she um, is a regular attendee at uh, the Epsom Derby on, on which uh, the Kentucky Derby is based and of course Royal Ascot is, is, is one of the heights of the uh, what's called the season. The season begins with rowing at Henley, uh, Royal Ascot, uh, Wimbledon and uh, Trooping the Colour and the Royal Tournament. Um, the, uh, the, the Queen has uh, spent quite a lot of time uh, you know, looking at, uh, at horse flesh here in the United States on unofficial visits, so uh, I'm sure she'll be, really enjoy uh, um, her Saturday uh, the Kentucky Derby. You know, here they are sitting in the, uh, the newly renovated Capitol, and uh, I, I, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but you know, our Capitol uh, a couple of times almost didn't even survive. There was, uh, of course, when the Union soldiers came through, they were ordered to burn all of the warehouses and uh, the factories here in Richmond. The fire spread out of control, but uh, the state capitol building and the governor's mansion, the White House, uh, the Confederacy, just about three blocks away to the north, uh, they were all spared, so that was good. And then you had the uh, balcony tragedy in 1870, and uh, a lot of people called for the, the demolition of the capitol, but uh, a lot of people liked it just the way it was, and they wanted to fix it up, and, and here many, many years later. The, well, the of, queen is. of course, our capital city, Richmond, is uh, based on Richmond on the Thames in England because it, they they looked upon our James River and thought that how much it looked like Richmond on the Thames, and and we were dubbed that name. And everything in America can be traced back to something in England. 
Well, I think everything is probably pushing it, but... Well, uh, most <laughs> everything. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be very careful what we say. This is true. Um, you were talking about the Queen and horses. Uh, uh, check, she actually has 25 horses in training, which is quite a big uh, stable. Um, and uh, um, you asked me about the colours. Well, the Queen's racing colours actually are purple, uh, purple and gold. Um, so um, you're quite right you know, to correct me. Um, uh, um, her racing colours are purple. And, and we understand that Prince Philip and we know Prince Charles are, are very active in sports and, and, and Charles plays polo and, and so horses play a big part in, in the royal family. Well, and you have to remember that Princess Anne has competed in the Olympics for the uh, UK and has actually served on the, uh, uh, the main council of the Olympics and is still involved uh, very closely with the Olympics. And of course, in 2012, uh, Britain will hold this, uh, host the Summer Olympics in, in London. Um, my view always over there was um, getting any uh, city other than London to bid for the Olympic Games is a sure way of failing. And it wasn't until they put London forward that uh, uh, Britain was able to gain the Olympic Games, which was a surprise given how strong the Paris uh, case was. Well, perhaps Queen Elizabeth, speaking fluent French, convinced the parent Parisians yeah. to maybe step aside a little bit. <laughs> Tony, well, we, we talked earlier about her uh, 